I'd like to talk to you about crossing red lines, about insulting the Prophet Muhammad. A Muslim tells me, although most of the Muslims on the channel tell me, they agree with me. We all agree together about being peaceful. But one Muslim sent me a comment about people being prepared to die if they cross the red line because some Americans and non-Muslims don't appreciate the passion that Muslims have for Islam and for, <clears throat> for Prophet Muhammad. And it's something beyond my grasp of understanding. But I, don't, I say that's not so, because although I may not love the Prophet Muhammad like you do, I do love my children. Now, let's not argue who loves mo whom more, whether you love Prophet Muhammad more than I love my children. Let me just tell you this. I love my children at the maximum capacity of my ability to love, so I can't love them anymore. If someone tried to hurt them, if there was a speeding truck coming at them, I would jump in front of the truck and push them out of the way and die. That's how much I love my children. I will die defending them. If anybody does anything to hurt my children, they, they're going to have to get through me first. That being said, I've had people comment on YouTube that, uh, among other things, racial slurs against my children, the hope that my child who was diagnosed with, can with cancer, someone said they hoped my child died as soon as possible. Did I go crazy and threaten this person? No, I didn't. Actually, that person today considers me a friend because we had a dialogue. Um, so, there are red lines. And this guy crossed a red line with me, but I didn't try to burn him out of his house. And that's what maturity is about. And actually... After my dialogue with him, I don't think he's going to be doing that anymore. Because people who do these hateful things need to be woken up. And they're not going to get woken up by somebody threatening to kill them. So, <clears throat> that red line excuse for why Muslims need to go attack people when their prophet's offended doesn't wash with me. Okay, secondly, Netanyahu is wanting um, Obama to put red lines down for Iran. <clears throat> I think this is ridiculous too. He, Netanyahu is reaching out to the American people with billionaire friend or friends to try to shame Obama into basically agreeing to go to war alongside Israel against Iran if Iran hits particular milestones in nuclear development. Obama's not interested. And even Romney isn't interested. Isn't that funny? Didn't you think, didn't a lot of you think that if, Netanya if Netanyahu wanted it, America would roll over and give it to him? The fact is, America gives everything Israel asks until America doesn't want to give it. And this is something America does not want to do. And American people do not want to have Israel drag them into war against Iran. But Netanyahu says, wait a minute. This is for all of us, because if Iran gets this nuclear power, it's gonna, it could be World War III. Well, I, and, and it's time America stand up and stand be, beside Israel for, for justice. I say I agree with Netanyahu to some extent, <clears throat> that we do need to do something about what's happening with Iran. But I would say there's a bigger threat, and red lines had been given to Israel previously, and Israel, I think, has ignored the red lines. The red lines were, we need to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Now, it seems like Israel, who basically is in charge of this deal, because Israel is up here, Palestinians are down here, Israel basically has their figurative boot on the head of the Palestinians. In order to make a deal for peace, you really need Israel to agree. But for some reason, Israel has not had high motivation to agree to laying down red lines, stopping territory development, stopping building these settlements, and agreeing on some lines so we could actually split these countries or whatever we're going to do to resolve the issue. But all the presidents hit, hit the same dead end with Israel because Israel, apparently, is not highly motivated to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, because Israelis' standard of living is very high. Palestinians is very low. <clears throat> so I would say to Obama, 
If I if I was Obama, I would say, okay, I'll give you I'll give you your red lines, and we'll give Iran red lines, and if they cross them, we'll join you and go to war. We'll destroy Iran's missile defenses and missile offensive uh, development. But in order for us to agree to do that, you have to first give us some red lines and agree now and solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Divide up the property, come to an agreement, and let's make this thing happen. Because the reality is, Israel says that this is going to make the world more dangerous. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has made the world way more dangerous than Iran ever will. If you interview the 9-11 hijackers, the Libyan hijacker, what's the first thing they'll say? Why did you do this? Israel. America's support of Israel. Listen to Al-Qaeda whenever they talk. America's support of Israel. I hope Americans know that Iran, even though it looks, Iran, even though it looks dangerous to us what's happening over there, we are in constant danger. The world is in constant danger because angry Muslims who want to hurt America want to hurt America because of a list of reasons. And usually, number one or number two on their list of reasons is the Israeli relationship with Palestine and Israelis, the Israel relationship with us. So, to recap, if Netanyahu wants us to, to honor his red lines, then he should honor our red lines, which are to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So let me know what you think.